Hey everyone, it's Ryan and Jesse coming to you this week with another tech tip. This week is the 10th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, so we're talking today about disaster recovery and business continuity. Stick around to the end, uh, and we're talking about a template. If you do not have a disaster recovery and business continuity plan, we want you to. If you're one of our complete care managed service clients, uh, we'll come help you with it. We'll basically walk you walk you through it, make sure you have everything uh, where it needs to be. In fact, that's why Jesse's here today. Uh, he's one of our experts when it comes to that. He's walked through this with, with several clients and uh, really knows the ins and outs of it. Uh, if you're not a managed service client, we'd still be happy to send you our template. And if you have any problems or questions with it, we're here to help. We can help, uh, help you through that as well. So, Jesse, uh, let's talk about disaster recovery. So some terms that get confused a lot are disaster recovery versus business continuity. What are they and why do they matter to you? So what are your thoughts on disaster recovery to begin with? Well, Ryan, disaster recovery is simply having access to your data. You know, you got something backed up on a thumb drive, on an external drive, or even burnt to a DVD. Um, you know, that's great. That's a big piece of the puzzle. But the other half of that equation is how are you going to run it? How are you going to access it? You know, if worst comes to worst and your building's no longer there or fire or something, uh, what do you do with that data? Okay. So what, when we talk to lots of new clients or new prospects and they say, hey, I've got a backup and they whip out their external hard drive or their Carbonite backup in the right. cloud, that's a disaster recovery, but that's not really the full business continuity plan. No, sir. You have to, as you well know, you have to have stuff to run it on, whether it be in the cloud or a backup server or backup site. Okay. So with business continuity, in addition to just that disaster recovery piece, which you have to have, you've got to have a plan in place to get that data back up and running. Uh, you have to have a location to go to. You have to have an internet provider. So if you moved all your data to the cloud, how would you be up and running again? Would you send staff to North Mississippi or Jackson or Texas? Uh, would you just tell them to go home and work off their, their you know, their wireless hotspots off their cell phone? Uh, where would they go? What would they do? So the business continuity plan uh, covers a lot more than just basic disaster recovery. And that's where this template comes in so handy. It really helps you define the two uh, and lay out scenarios because you, you don't want the first time that you've thought about this to be the day after a disaster happens. And we're not just talking about hurricanes here. In fact, obviously being on the Gulf Coast, it's something that we think about every day. But do you know what? We had four power outages last year. Just, you know, the power company working across the street, somebody with a backhoe hits the line. So if you're down for three or four hours for a power outage, that's a business continuity plan. What do you do in cases like that? How do your people work? What happens if the internet goes down? Do you need a second internet connection? Do you not? What if there's a fire or a flood, God forbid? Do you have a plan in place for that? Uh, so there's not a one size fits all. There's not one plan for everyone. You need to spend some time on your individual plan. Uh, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So. You probably expect us to talk all about the tech stuff, but we will get to that. Let's talk about some of the other things that maybe aren't so technical sure. that people may not be thinking about that this plan does address. One thing is simply being able to contact your employees and the other people that may not be direct employees but are important to your business. Uh, you know, when people evacuate, they kind of scatter to all ends of the globe, and how are you going to track them down, get in touch with them, and get a plan together? Okay. Another thing is an emergency response team, an ERT. So what happens when something happens? You know, who's going to work on what? There's not a one size fits all for that either. Sometimes you really don't want to put the ER team together. You don't want to, to assemble the team until the disaster strikes because what we found in Katrina, we had lots of business owners that were on vacation or their kids had started the school and they were doing kids stuff. They weren't necessarily in the office. So some of the, some of the key cogs to the wheel weren't there. So you need a plan in place, but it's got to be flexible enough to change uh, depending on who's available uh, and where people go in the event of a disaster. So that's kind of the ERT. Mm -hmm. uh, a third point is your media uh, contacts. How do you get in touch with your clients? How do you get in touch with your customers? Let them know like we're, we're down this week, but we plan to be up on Monday, or you know we're, we're this is our temporary location. How do you find us? You know so that they they know what what's going on with you. Yeah, that's a good point. Another point is insurance information. So right now, I believe it said Mississippi requires you to have your insurance card in your vehicle, but do you carry your business insurance information around in your wallet? Chances are you don't. You may not need to. What we suggest is putting all that information in your plan, making electronic copies of this plan that are stay, stored offsite in the cloud. Your key employee should have a copy of this as well as you should have a hard copy. Uh, in fact, we have several copies printed in our safe as well as copies in, on our server locally and in the cloud. 
So you have to be able to get to this information and especially things like insurance information. So what if your whole business is hit, your whole building's down, uh, how do you get to that information? Because you want to be back up and running. You want an insurance person out here looking over your claim to try to get you some cash as soon as possible. Absolutely. Which leads us to financial planning. Um, you know, Do you have something tucked away under the mattress or buried in the backyard? Who has access to it? Who knows it's there? How much do you need? You know, are you going to be going a few weeks, uh, you know, payroll without being able to access a bank? Um, it's an important, important piece of that wheel. Yeah, that we had clients when Katrina hit, they had plenty of money in the bank and just couldn't get to it. So plans for for things like that, you know, are very important. So, so we've talked about a few non-technical things. Those and even more are covered in the disaster recovery business continuity plan template. Now. We're nerds, so let's talk about the tech stuff. All right, finally. So backups, big important thing. If you don't have backups, then you know you're you're kind of a moments away from disaster at any time. So there's different kind of backups. There's a uh, file level backups. There's basically like my documents. You know your PDFs and your docs and any other files. Basically, you know where do you keep them? Uh, how do you back them up? Is it redundant? Um, and that's like what you talked about with flash drives and external hard drives. Um, and then there's you know, you, you kind of progress down the road to, to more substantial backups, like uh, we call them a WIBS, a Windows Image Backup, Windows Server Backup, which is basically a snapshot in time of your entire operating system, files and all, which reduces the time it takes to get spun back mm -hmm. up, but you still need hardware. Um, and then I guess our third option, our biggest option, is we call a BDR, Backup Disaster Recovery Plan. Um, but it is a physical box that usually sits on your in, at your site and uh, basically takes a snapshot of the server every hour or so so it's an it's an your data is never more than an hour old and it also has the added benefit of being able to get spun back up in the cloud which we'll touch on here in a minute yeah yeah that, those are those are obviously very big uh differentiators different things to backups because everybody says they have a backup but what does that really mean and and uh being able to address it and kind of go into your major systems obviously you got to have a backup and disaster recovery plan for the whole office uh, but what about each individual system, you know, your payroll system, your HR system, uh, your time and billing system, if you are a product-based company, maybe your inventory system. So you want to think about it as the whole company, a very holistic approach, but also as each individual application. Uh, talk to each vendor, or we can talk to each vendor for you and say, what happens if you, if you, you know, had an outage? One of the things that's kind of scary that we found is a lot of companies, when they move their data to the cloud, they don't check and find out how that cloud vendor backs up. You'd be surprised some of these low cost, inexpensive cloud vendors do not back up your data at all. So if that's the case, if you really like that vendor, can you get a copy locally? Uh, so those things need to be looked at and addressed and lots of times people don't think about them until they need them and unfortunately sometimes that's too late. So another aspect to consider is the, your website and your social media presence. Uh, I wasn't here in 2005, but Ryan says that it was a nightmare trying to get in touch with people, oh, yeah. uh, trying to get a phone call. You know, you had to text everybody oh. you knew. And now companies have the ability with Twitter and Facebook and whatnot to to blast out a message to everybody. Um, very quickly. Very quickly, indeed. And so who's going to be in charge of that? Who's going to have access to it? You know, what's the chain of, you know, if this person's unavailable, then this person steps in. You don't want to have different people competing to send out probably similar messages, but it's just best to have it clearly defined. Mm -hmm. Another point is an alternate site. Uh, you may have heard these called uh, hot sites or warm sites or cold sites. There's differences in that we can explain. It basically boils down to do you need a second or third location? We have clients that have offices in Biloxi and offices in Gulfport, but they're both on the beach. So those would not be good alternate sites. You'd need another location for your staff to congregate. You know, and another thing, what if there's a fire? Just, just telling your employees that we need to meet at the edge of the parking lot farthest away from the building. That's a great starter. So, you know, do you need an alternate site for your office in the event of a disaster? And if so, it'll probably be different depending on what that disaster is. An alternate site for a hurricane may be different than, you know, just simply a fire in your building or a power outage. So, alternate sites, you gotta think about those. Taking that one step further, having remote access. Yeah. You know, where, once you get people to these alternate sites and you have an internet connection, you know, you have all that already worked out, um, how do you access your data? Is it, you know, do you have like a cloud level file backup? So you just pull down your files. Our clients who already have a BDR, uh, you can be up and running pretty much in a matter of minutes. Yeah, well, I'd good. say an hour. But how do you access your data once you're on your remote site? You're not at your office, you're, 
you know, everybody might just be at home. So yeah, getting to your data to be able to work with it is a huge piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Next is voice and data. So this happens more than we'd like to admit, just the phones go down. So if you're, you know, say the sky's blue and there's not a cloud in it, but what happens if the phones go down? Who is responsible in your office for having that roll over to a cell phone or to another line? Or in a bigger scenario like a fire or a hurricane, uh, what do you do? Do you forward the lines to somebody out of the area? What happens if your internet goes down? Well, we've got some great options with Verizon now to have you cellular backups for the entire office. So you can have one router that automatically flips to cell phone backup uh, in the event that there's an issue with your ISP. As we move more and more data to the cloud, one of the things we have to think about is internet access. A few years ago, not having internet for a few hours was just inconvenient. Today, not having it means you're almost shut down. Mm -hmm. So do you have a backup internet provider? Uh, and if so, who has access to turn that off and on? Uh, and what do you have to do to turn that on in the event of an, an outage? I'm gonna talk about backups one more time just because it's so important. Um, right. The last piece of the puzzle, well, so you have a backup, you have Carbonite or Jungle Disk or even a VDR. And that's wonderful, but the next piece is to test. Test your data, make sure it's there, make sure you're getting what you think you're getting. It's something we take very right. seriously. Um, we have a guy dedicated to it. So yeah, once you have your backup plan in place, it needs to be tested, you know, not, and not just, okay, it's there, it's still running, every, all the lights are green. Like, see if you can access an old document. Uh, is, do you have what you think you have? Because the worst time to find out is when you absolutely you know, need it. We picked up so many new clients after the storm because they called us and said, hey, I just talked to my IT person, they came on site and we found out my backups aren't any good. In fact, there was an attorney down on the beach we talked to and they said, hey, my IT guy came over and we found out we have nothing back up, backing up. And I said, well, can you tell me what was happening? And they said, well, I was running this backup job every day at five o'clock when we ended. And I thought, you know, it was odd. It only took about 20 seconds. Well, it turns out she was just backing up two or three shortcuts of Word documents. The entire server was getting skipped mm -hmm. and had been doing this for over a year. So just simply nobody had tested it. So definitely make sure those backups are tested regularly and make sure the whole plan is tested. So at least test this plan once a year, do a dry run. May is a good time because it's right at the beginning of hurricane season. Uh, and it's kind of starting to be top of mind for everybody. So once you get this plan in place, which we're happy to help with, mm -hmm. um, test it regularly, pretend like you have an issue, and get your whole staff involved so that everybody would know. Again, the first time you go through this uh, does not need to be when there is uh, a disaster looming. So thank you very much, and thank you, Jesse, My for pleasure. your wisdom uh, sharing you. it with us today. And uh, we'll talk to you on the next tech tip. Thank you. Thank you.